G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, I wanna to talk to you guys about some important lessons that I've learned with my white Altolern Prologus Calvus. If you've been on my channel for a while now, you'll know that back in November 2020, I had spawned my Calvus for a third time, and that was a complete failure. I had 95 fry in that spawn, it was their largest spawn to date, and I lost all those fry within the span of two to three weeks. I was absolutely devastated, as you can tell in that video. I learned some valuable lessons from that and I managed to successfully get the guys to spawn again one month later. Normally it takes my calvus three to four months in between spawning, but I managed to get my female fattened up within the span of a month by feeding her at the back of the tank. But today I wanna to talk to you about this fourth spawn and how that fourth spawn is doing. It's, they're about a month old now and uh, I just wanna share with you guys some of the lessons that I've learned and some tips that I'm sure will benefit you guys out there because I've learned some valuable lessons over the last month and a half. Anyway guys, onto the video. And this is the tank that I put my third batch of Altalian Prologus Calvus Fry in. I haven't touched it apart from adding two albino baby bristle nose in here and they've been cleaning the glass slowly. They are quite small, you can see one on the front pane there. And there is one Altalian Prologus Calvus Fry left. You can see the tank is quite dirty. There's an uneaten uh, algae wafer right here from last night from the bristlenose catfish that didn't need it. But apart from that, the tank looked like this when I put the Altolimpralogus calvus fry in here. So the first two times I spawned Altolimpralogus calvus, the tanks were pretty much brand new. No fish had previously been in those tanks and those calvus survived. However, this tank did have fish in it and I didn't clean it didn't even think that it would be bad. Stupid on my part, I own that mistake. Lazy on my part, again, I own that. It is my fault. And I've got, obviously got no one else to blame but myself for not cleaning the tank before putting the fry in. But I let my guard down with the third batch of fry. I thought, yeah, this is gonna be sweet. This is gonna be easy. They're gonna be fine. Put them in there. I really was of the opinion that having a sterile tank wouldn't benefit the fry. I really did think that having mulm and algae growth on the bottom of the tank would benefit them because there would be microorganisms living in that mulm for the fish to feed off during the day. However, having a tank that's this dirty with fry that are like Altolimpralogus calvus uh, isn't a good idea. So what I mean by that is fry that sit on the bottom of the tank until they are a little bit more mature. Altolimpralogus calvus fry generally sit on the bottom of the tank, even though they're free swimming, they sit on the bottom of the tank almost for the first month maybe three weeks. While they're sitting on this sort of surface, I believe my third batch got, all got infected from the surface and died. So the experiment is I'm gonna pop them in the exact same tank. The only difference is that the tank is gonna be spotless and it's gonna have crushed coral as the sand bed. But I believe having some clean substrate on the bottom of the tank rather than a dirty bare bottom tank is gonna benefit my Altolimpralogus calvus fry this fourth batch. So I'm gonna keep the tank exactly the same. The only difference is gonna to be totally clean and it's gonna have a substrate. So that's why I've decided to have the fourth batch of fry in the exact same tank so there aren't many variables that are different. So with this little experiment, hopefully we'll all learn a lesson from it. So this is what I'm using for the calvus fry. So it's just crushed coral, it's formed into sand, mainly for use in marine and reef aquariums. This stuff isn't cheap, very, very expensive. Basically, I would love to use this in all my aquariums in my fish room, but the price is just, it's not, it's not justifiable. Uh, you're talking for a 22 pound bag, 10 kilos. You're looking at about 80 to $90 Australian for just this 10 kilo bag. Whereas the pool filter sand I bought, 20 kilos for $18. Can't justify the price. I'm in the process of cleaning this stuff up now because the calvus fry are becoming free swimming in their parent shell. Anyway, I'm gonna show you what it's like to clean this. You can see how dusty it is with the first wash. The water looks chalky. Just pour it out. And that's how you clean your know, aquarium gravel. So, Onto cleaning the tank. And so here is the calvus tank now. The rock's out, the calvus out obviously as well. So I'm gonna scrape all this algae off, siphon it all out, and then put the coral sand in. So 
So guys, that's with all the algae scraped off. I've siphoned out most of the poop I could get that was set at the bottom. Now I'm just going to let this siphon all the way down. Then I'm going to fill it up with fresh water. This tank is isolated out of the system by the way. The return line is cut off. So no water is coming in uh, to this tank from the rest of the system. So the rest of the system isn't getting this dirty water. So I'm just siphoning it all out. I'm going to fill it back up with fresh tap water. Siphon it back out again. So I can get all, as much of these particulates out of the water. I might do that a couple times just to make sure I got as many of these particulates out of the water as much as I can. I think I'm going to wash this a couple times with fresh tap water, siphon it back out, repeat the cycle, siphon it back out until I can get as much of this particulate out of this water and then I'll fill it up with my water change water and then let that settle. Once it's settled, I'll pop in the coral sand. So this is the first rinse. I'm filling this tank up with fresh water now, fresh tap water. As long as I don't fill it up to the bulkhead, which is there, right in the center of frame, water won't flow out of this tank and into the system. So I need to fill the tank up to just below that bulkhead. I'm not worried about the sponge filters. There's more than enough biological media in this system. But look how clear the water looks already. So I'm just gonna drain this out after I fill it up, drain it back out into the garden, and then I will fill it up with my water change water, which has been treated with Tanganyika buffer reflake salt. So the return pump is in the drum, it's my water change water and the line is running all the way to the tank. So I'll just turn the exposure down a bit. So you can see all the sand in there, more than enough. Sand bed's about a centimetre deep all the way along the two foot tank. This tank is two foot long by one foot wide but just over one foot high so uh, I'm gonna, you can see the little contraption I've got here. This is to slow the water down as it rains into the tank from the return pump. These clamps are very handy. Uh, you can buy them from reject shops or your local hardware store. They really help you do water changes. And uh, this is just a fruit container that I get from my local grocery store. Uh, when you buy apples or pears, they come in this breathable container. If you get these containers but without holes, you can just put holes in them yourself and this will help the water flow into your tank be a little bit more gentler. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna turn the return pump on now and we'll see the tank fill up. There we go. Water's flowing in. I've also got the lid on this tank uh, as closed as much as I can so the water doesn't splash around. And once the water level reaches the bottom of this container, it won't splash around anymore. So, you can see the sand bed is getting disturbed. This sand is very, very fine grain. Doesn't take a lot for it to get stirred up. The tank is on its way to getting full. See the water is very cloudy, even though I washed it fairly well. But once I plug this tank back into the system, this water will dilute and you won't even notice that cloudiness at all. Within about an hour or two, it will be all gone. Now I may as well show you the parents. So here are the white Alto Lampologus calvus. You can see the male obviously way larger than the female. And he is looking quite stressed because I'm holding the camera right up towards the fish tank. Uh, but the main reason why I'm doing this today is, and there's no way you're going to be able to see him on this with this lens, is that I can see down the length of this shell here in this little hole, fry and they're free swimming in the shell. So I expect in the next day or two, those fry are gonna be exiting that shell and I'll need to catch them and put them in their own tank. Now you might wonder, why didn't I do this weeks ago? Why didn't I set this tank up, have it ready to go for the fry? Well, the reason is I didn't want algae to form on the sand bed. I want it to be as clean as possible and this is why I'm leaving it pretty much to till the 11th hour to get this done. So this sand bed will be clean, there'll be hardly any debris settled on it once I put the fry in this tank and it should be fine. Anyway, 
better get ready to turn the return pump off because this tank is filling up. But even so, I uh, don't really need to worry about uh, the tank overfilling because it can't. Because once the water level reaches the level that it is on the tank on the left and on the right, it will start overflowing into the bulkhead and into the sump. So we're almost at the point of where the water level is level with the rest of the tanks in the system. As you can see, they're pretty much all the same level. So once this tank fills up to that point, water will be flowing over the bulkhead into the sump and this water will start to dilute and get clear. The tank is now full and you can see the coral sand nice and clean. Just need to get this water nice and clear. Now I'll just quickly show you what this looks like compared to my pool filter sand. Not that much difference. It is wider but the grain size is pretty much the same. But obviously this stuff has a lot of buffering capacity. Now I'm going to plug this, this tank into the system and I'm going to show you how I do that by turning on the return line. So water is going to start flowing into this tank and then spilling back over the bulkhead and then into the rest of my system. So let's go do that now. So we go to the back of the tank. So we go to the back of the stand. <laughs> and this is tank 10, all numbered. But I just twist that. And now water is flowing back into the tank. And this will start to fill up even more. And now this will dilute. Water from the system will flow in to that tank. And water from this tank will flow out of it into the system, diluting this tank and the cloudiness. So all that cloudiness is going straight to the sump. It's going to go straight to the sump down here, go through the mechanical and biological filtration before it even enters the rest of the system. So a lot of that cloudiness should be filtered up by my filter. You won't even really see it because there's over 2,000 litres of water in this system. So I'll show you the babies in the shell. Hopefully you'll be able to see them on my mobile. Surprisingly the mobile camera works better for this sort of thing than my DSLR because the angle of the glass so uh, with the big lenses on my DSLR I can't get sharp focus but yeah you can see with my mobile phone you can see the fry in the shell moving around I've added some baby brine shrimp to this tank so hopefully some of that will go into the shell and I expect these guys to be exiting that shell tomorrow. I'll be netting some out and uh, putting them in their tank, in their little grout tank for the next few months. So, see mum and dad looking after them there. Beautiful looking fish. And their tank is up here. And you'll see how clear it is now from yesterday. Within an hour or two, it was pretty much this clear. So it's all ready to go. Nice clean sand bed for the new lot of fry. And here's the tank with all the rocks in it. Just some basic slate that I've kind of tried to make some groups of caves all the way down the length of this tank. So they have plenty of hidey holes. So it's two days later after the video you just saw. Just turn the lights on. I suspect that the majority of Calvis fry is still in the shell. However, I've just seen two Calvis fry in this tank. So, where's the first one I saw? So, here's the first one. Right there in the center of the frame. And the second one is somewhere along this line. They are so well camouflaged. Here we go. Right there. 
Oops. Now, it's really hard to see the fry in here, but there's one there, and there's one there, and I don't know where the third is. He's, he or she is in here somewhere. But uh, that's all I've caught this afternoon. There are a ton of fry in the shell still, in the parent's tank below. So that's this parent's tank here. And this is gonna be their grow out tank. So I don't have far to move them all. But, yeah, that's all I've caught this afternoon, three. So hopefully tomorrow we'll catch a lot more. And that'll be a great Christmas present because tomorrow is Christmas Eve. <laughs> so it's the next day and I'm starting to see a lot more Calvus fry. So if we go to this corner of the tank, you can see quite a few have uh, gathered up in this corner. And there are just a couple in this corner here. And um, hopefully there are more in the shell. I've caught, so far, 67 Calvus fry. I've just popped in some baby brine shrimp into their tank to give them their first proper feeding. I was feeding the parents' tank for the last two to three days, just in the chance that some of this baby brine shrimp would go into the parents' shell. So they were getting fed. Uh, you can see them all scattered throughout the tank. They're a little bit easy to see with this white coral sand. They're not as camouflaged, but hopefully the survival rate will increase now that this coral sand is nice and clean and um, fresh for them. So they'll pick off this baby brine shrimp as they settle into their tank. At the moment, I've also put in some baby brine shrimp into the parents' tank. There are some more fry right at the back corner over there. I think we've counted about five. Five more up there. So that's why there's some baby brine shrimp in this tank as well. And I do suspect that there's more fry in the parent shell. Um, however, I haven't seen any yet. So I'm just going to leave that for now. I'm not going to try and stress out the fry that are in the back corner. It's very hard to get to that back corner over there. Uh, the way the plumbing is and the way the stand is. So I'm just going to leave them for now and hopefully they come forward to the front of the tank and I'll be able to collect them from the front here. But anyway, 67 all up so far. And here's the fry now, guys. This is the 13th of January, 2021. And you can see they're pretty much swimming in the water column now. However, there are some sitting on the bottom of the sand bed. Now, you're gonna get this occasionally. Obviously, they're all gonna take a rest and sit in that sand bed. And if that sand bed is dirty, or the, or the glass is dirty, I had these previously in a bare bottom tank. Um, my previous spawns were all in bare bottom tanks and they didn't do as well as this spawn. Uh, as I said, this is my fourth consecutive spawn and I have not lost one fry to date. I have not seen one death. Uh, in my previous spawns, I was seeing deaths about a month in and uh, then they would slowly stop dying and then they were fine. And I attribute it pretty much now to the bottom of the tank not being clean for these guys. Again, not all species of cichlids need the bottom of the tank spick and span. Uh, however, from my experience with Calvus, they do because they sit on the bottom of the sand for such a long time, about a month after they first become free swimming. They take long rests on the sand, as you can see here. And if the bottom of your tank is dirty, they're gonna pick up infections and slowly die away like mine did. Um, I'm pretty sure most people will have that problem with Calvus. Maybe not, I don't know, but I definitely did. So hopefully you can learn from my mistake, keep the bottom of your tank clean. But there you go. They're doing quite well, uh, about a month in now, so yeah, very, very happy, stoked that I worked out the issue. Uh, but yeah, that's what um, experience pays off, you know, four, four times to get them to be completely successful. I've got their older brothers and sisters down here. They look awesome in this tank. So I successfully spawned the first two lots, however the third was the failure. And uh, I did lose some in my first and second spawn. Uh, but however, in my fourth spawn, I have not lost one. So I think I have nailed it now with uh, the technique and what to do with uh, your calvus fry. And hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes. So the big lesson I learned with calvus is have the bottom of your tanks clean. You don't have, always necessarily need to have the bottom of the tank spotlessly clean for cichlids. 
for instance, my mouth brooding cichlids, such as my Kawanga golds and my Ventralis chaitika. Their mother spits the babies out. They're completely free swimming. They don't come in contact with the bottom of the tank and they have all been fine. I have not lost one to date. Over my calvus, those fry, they sit on the bottom of the tank for about the first month of their life. And then eventually over time, they become more and more free swimming in the water column until they no longer rest on the bottom of the tank. And because they're resting on the bottom of the tank, they're sitting in that detritus and they can get infections on the bottom of their body. And that's unfortunately what led to the death, complete death, of my 95 fry from my third spawn of calvus. So guys, I really hope you found this video informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it and even share the video if you can. Anyway guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.